Hi there, I'm Ed from Collective Soul. We want to thank Alice Cooper for having us on Nights with Alice tonight to answer questions about our new album, Blood. Let's start answering. This is from Blake from Edmund. Hey guys, what was the writing and recording process like for Blood? Also, we'll cut the chord beyond the record that will be released next year as part of the songs that were recorded at Ed's house. Thanks. Uh, Blake, we did it in two, two sessions. We did two weeks at my house and recorded 10 songs. And then we did a year later, we did 10 days at a studio in Jersey called The Barbershop, of which we recorded 10 more songs. Originally, we were gonna do a double album. Then our management said, are y'all idiots? Nobody does double albums anymore. So we split it up into two. And yes, Cut the Core will be on the second recording that'll come out next year. As of now, we haven't got a title for it. All right, Wendy from Royal Oak. What's your favorite song on Blood? I think Unanimous, Unanimous, I can't even say the word. It's too early to say that word. Uh, it would be Them Blues. I really, I think it was a different stretch for us as Collective Soul, a little more piano. And to be able to play it live as a band, I could feel the energy, I can remember doing it. And uh, the guys really, help capture it. It's just, it was just a fun song to play. All right. What we got? Rick from Yakima. Will the album be available in vinyl? Yes, it will, sir. As I said earlier, it was supposed to be a double album. So we were, we were thinking old school all along there, Rick. Let's see what we got here. Val from Kansas City. Are there bands you've wanted to watch at festivals you're playing at, but you're too busy to get to the stage? Probably everyone we played with. <laughs> it's kind of a crazy time at festivals. It's just all you can do to get prepared and make sure you're you're ready for your gig. Um, I do remember playing once. We were doing it was a uh, Summerfest, and we were live on the radio. And at the same time, Foo Fighters were on another stage, and we were trying to get in touch with them. And they finished early before us, and they were driving off in the cars and I just live on the radio said hey Dave it's boys from Collective Soul one day we'd love to meet you and I could see the car stop they pulled back they came over and they watched our second half of our set that evening so that was always kind of a cool moment for me to hang out with Dave and we were bragging because we were did Crazy Train and I think they did uh, Carry On My Wayward Son that night as their cover we were talking about how we came up you know who chose what songs all right we got Larry from Atlanta What's up, homie? What other bands did you come up when you were starting out that you still remember fondly? Well, well first and foremost with the Elton, that's my pop hero. And then being from Atlanta, you know, R.E.M. was a big deal to us. And then Driving and Crying was, were very influential for, uh, you know, being local coming up because it showcased that, you know, you could be successful being from Atlanta or Athens or the Georgia area. Still love those bands. By the way, Driving Crown's new album's out. You need to check it out, Larry. All right, we got Joni from Buffalo. Are there still groupies like we've heard of? Do they still exist, or is it more like girls trying to take pictures with you and get free food? More like trying to get free alcohol than food? No, I, we've never had groupies. I just, I think that kind of went out with, uh, I don't know, the 80s. I, I don't know, We just that was something we just never got into. We were too busy. We are too exhausted. Paige from Seattle. What are a couple highlights from the last 25 years and one thing that you wish never happened? There's a lot of things I wish never happened, so that's that's a loaded question. But the highlights from the last 25 years, I would I would say Elton John playing and singing on a song with us. You know, being your musical hero and to have him come in and sing was, you know, that's my award for being in music. Beth from Milwaukee, who are your greatest musical influences that provide inspiration for your music style, writing, and look? Also, what music genre do you consider yourselves to be? Well, first, we're a rock and roll band. And whatever you want to put before or after that, your call. Um, my greatest musical influence would be my parents, first and foremost. My father was a minister of music. My mom played piano in the church, so I kind of was raised on gospel and uh, singing in the church. And as far as style and writing, I go back to Elton, because that's the first one that I really caught my interest. And from there, I kind of went backwards. I went to the Beatles, the Stones, and then really, really love the Cars, love uh, the Clash, um, T 
Tears for Fears, kind of got caught up in that whole genre right there, and I love that. So um, I still listen to that a lot. Love Jackson Brown. It, I, I like too many. There's too many. I'll steal from anyone. <laughs> Cindy from Rockford. What was the last band that you paid money to go see? Man, I keep repeating myself, but Dean and I went and saw uh, Elton John. And then we had a day off a couple of years ago, and we flew out to Red Rocks to see Duran Duran. Yeah. Lee from Raleigh. Lay, Raleigh, Lay, Raleigh. How would you describe the tour bus? If you could pimp it out, what would you paint on the sides? Well, I get the back of the bus, so our tour manager calls it Ed's Playpen. Um, it's comfortable. It's very comfortable. You know, it's, it's full. That's how I would describe it, full. And what would I paint on the sides? You ever seen a grown man's ass? <laughs> Annie from Tulsa. I don't really have a question. I just want to tell you I like your music a lot. When I was a little, when I was little, my dad used to play Shine in the car a lot. Well, thank you, Annie. That's very kind. Seriously, that's awesome. I hope you like the new music. I'm very proud of it. So, if you were a child then, 25 years later, you are old enough to breed now. So maybe you have a child and you could play him some of the new music on the new record, Blood. Tina from Grand Rapids. When you were, when you were, you were starting out. What headliners did you open up for that you were in awe of? All of them. I mean, we were a band a month and we were played Woodstock 94 and then we we're on tour with Aerosmith. Then we were on tour with Van Halen. So we had a lot of growing up to do pretty quick. Our jaws were open quite often that first year. Bailey from Bowling Green, uh, Corvette country. Was there a point in your career that it was weird being at home where it's quiet as opposed to a tour bus and a loud venue? Not at all. I like quiet. I like my home. Uh, I think it takes a little getting used to schedule-wise. That's the only thing that you run into. The, the, the noise is not a problem at all. That, actually, I welcome no noise. Sasha from Birmingham, Alabama. How long into a tour does it take for you to forget what town you're in? How do you remember? We're, we're pretty good about that. There's a, there's a day sheet put up every day. Um, and you you just know where you are and you get out start exploring to see what the town has to offer what trouble what pubs we can find so we're, we're pretty good about knowing where we are no one's gotten lost yet hannah from philadelphia when you listen to shine do you forget it's you do you ever zone out and think that's a great song what band is that <laughs> oh i zone out a lot <laughs> more than one song no no i'm very proud of that song one of the reasons I'm proud of it because it was a demo. It was made with a drum machine in a basement on an eight track. And to me, it kind of showcased the power of, to me, a well-written song. And I, I, I say that out of confidence, not ego. And it helped me learn to write better songs. I think I've written many more songs that are better qualified as good songs or uh, constitute well-written songs other than Shine. But I'm very grateful for Shine because it begot all the other songs. Seth from Daytona Beach, who comes up with the ideas for your tour shirts? Um, sometimes we do, but most of the time we leave it up to our company, uh, Four Leaf and uh, Ronnie and uh, uh, Casey. What's the name of their company? Swagline. What is it? Swagline. Swagline, yeah, Swagline. I drew a blank there for a second. But Ronnie's the one that really is the best because sometimes you, what you think you would like, your audience may not like and what you don't like your audience will love and ronnie has that ability to to kind of fill our audience out and see what they like and they they do a great job we we even like it too so thank you to casey ronnie and uh four leaf morgan from nashville what bands do you get confused for one of them be soul asylum they love our runaway train version <laughs> we got a tour with dave last year we had a good laugh about that so many times people come up and they go, man, I love that Runaway song, Runaway Train song. I was like, I do too. It's a great song. We didn't write it or play it. Thank you. Lee from Richmond. What was Woodstock like back in 1994 and then 1999? Uh, we were nervous 94 just because, like I said, we'd been a band for a month. And for us, it was fun to get to meet other artists. I remember driving in the parking lot and live 
they had just hit also. So we kind of hung out and exchanged picks with each other and became lifelong friends from that point. And then in 99, the thing I remember the most is I had to drive back and do, I think it was uh, Regis and Kelly at the time, early morning. And on our way back, we stopped at a truck stop and John Enwistle was in the, walking out, the Who's bass player. And I was like, oh my God, I was so nervous. And I was with our guitar tech, Charlie, Steve Cohen. And I, he goes, well, just go say hey. So I was like, John, hey, John. And Charlie's like, he's deaf, John. And he turned around and he came over and I said, hey man, I'm Ed from Collective Soul. Held my hand out, he shook it and he goes, hold on, you're my girlfriend's favorite band. And walked off and brought her over. <laughs> it was a great story. She was a sweetheart, but I was like, no offense, I wanted to hang out with John, the spider. Donna from Long Beach. In your high school yearbook, you're most likely, I was uh, voted most talented. Nothing with looks or style, talented. Brianna, I like that name, from Trenton. What's the healthiest food you have on the tour bus? What's the least healthiest food you have on the tour bus? We're pretty healthy on the tour bus. I mean, we do a lot of fruits. Um, and uh, the least healthiest, I guess, would be after show. We always get pizza just because it's easy. And But I don't even consider that unhealthy. We've earned it at that point. All right. Oh, thanks again to Alice and United Stations for giving us the time tonight to answer your questions about blood. We'll see you out on the road this summer. Thank you again, Alice. You rock.